any means necessary. living with a fugitive inside of us, like buffalo wild under a buffalo sun, running in a closing in maddened world, racing against the predators of spirit, and facing off with progress's addictions, civilized destructions wanting habits, polite or violent, whatever it takes, with guns and laws and truth that lies. Domesticating the natural for harvest, threatened by what nature made free, with civilized rational aggressions, wreaking blood havoc. And no feeling of tomorrow or the ancient, in the plunderings of all our relations, the business of collateral damage, profiteering maximized in the carnage, running in a closing in maddened world, like buffalo wild under a buffalo sun. Sacred living reduced to looking to escape. Buffalo wild needing a buffalo roam. Between earth and stars breathing free. Following the future through the looking glass. Ancestor prayers praying to the buffalo spirit. Been living with a fugitive inside of us. Feeling the human part of buffalo dreams. In the reality of all life is sacred with buffalo medicine as one of the gifts. Hello everyone, Mike Meese is joining us. He's the campaign coordinator and co-founder of the Buffalo Field Campaign. Mike, tell us a little bit about the work that you guys are doing. Well, basically, we're talking about America's last wild, genetically pure, free-range in buffalo. There's over 600,000 in the United States now, but less than 10,000 are what we call buffalo. The rest are all beefalo. They're mixed with the cattle bovine gene. And the ones that are in Yellowstone Park of those genetically pure 100% buffalo are the only ones that aren't caged in, domestically fed, and basically treated like cows. So these are the ones that migrate. These are the ones that still have that trait. And they're the last descendants of the 30 to 60 million that used to roam this continent in North America. So the state of Montana has a zero tolerance policy for these animals to take one step into their um, state. And so Yellowstone Park is really not ideal bison habitat. That's the last place they hid from extinction, that from the mass slaughter of the 1800s and back in those days. And so we stand up for the bison's rights. We, we believe that they have the right to be here. Um, we believe that they're an intricate part of this country and we are fighting to make sure that there's buffalo for our children's future and for this great country's future. Now, how long have you been doing this, Mike? Um, this has been going on, unfortunately, for 17 years. I had the honor of starting this organization with a traditional Lakota elder, Rosalie Little Thunder. And um, I've personally lived here and been out on the front lines for the last 17 years. Um, standing up for these sacred beings. When I started this organization with Rosalie Little Thunder, she told me something that really hit home. And she's like, Mike, these animals that you've chosen to protect and be with are not animals to my people. I come from a group called ourselves Tatanka Oyate, which translates to the Buffalo Nation. And these animals aren't animals to us. They're our relatives, and that's how sacred they are. Four hours after being born, 
this wild buffalo calf is introduced to its first haze. The only defense this mom and calf have against predators is to stay with their herd. We're another generation after buffalo. Tell me what we've learned. We destroy everything sacred. Your tax dollars paid to kill this calf. Even after this tragic death, the hazing continues. Futures departed and people discarded like bottoms on the roadside. Mongrels, confusion, highways, intrusion, the reservations, dust blown dreams have been denied. Tell us a little bit about where we are and why this place is important. Well, this used to be the last place that we had cattle ranchers on, on this whole peninsula of Horse Butte, which is the calving grounds for the Yellowstone buffalo that migrate out on the west entrance. Um, Yellowstone Park is like a high elevation plateau, and it's not ideal habitat, and so the first green grass shoots pop out here, so the mamas come out to have their babies. Well, this, these people bought this land from the cattle ranchers and turned it into a bison preserve, as we can see. Say. But up until this year, the um, Department of Livestock would just claim eminent domain and come onto this pasture and haze them off either by trespassing or by flying a helicopter 10 feet off the ground and scaring the animals off. Um, this year, our governor passed a law that enlists there is an eminent threat of disease transmission to livestock, which of course there isn't out here, that they can't come on the private property and now this can actually be a bison preserve. And um, this disease that we talk about, brucellosis, is um, a disease that was brought here from the cows from Europe and it was given to our wildlife and now we're killing and slaughtering and, and doing all this damage to these buffalo in fear that these they would dare to give this disease back to the holy cow as I like to refer to them. It's never happened in the wild and actually down in Teton Park they were only allowed to open that park if they honored these old grandfather grazing allotments for cows and so for 50 years they've had these quote unquote diseased buffalo intermingling with the cows and there's never been a case of transmission. So it's all hype hysteria and basically just to have, when you look at the history of the cattle barons of the west they don't want to give up any of their control and this is one of their last strongholds trying to control the last wild buffalo. I mean the elk have it the elk have supposedly transmitted it. They're not even mentioned in the management plan and they do nothing to, to manage the, the elk. But the buffalo, they don't ever want to be more than 3,000 animals and they kill them all off anytime they want because of it. And today as we speak, they're running more buffalo back into Yellowstone Park because the state of Montana won't allow them here. Why is this fight important to you? Well, I think when you look in the buffalo's eyes and you get to stay and hang out with them and learn from them, the buffalo have a lot to teach humans. Um, they work in a hierarchy way, too, where there's leaders, but their leaders are there to make sure the entire herd survives. The, the, their leaders care about every single one in the herd, and they take care of one another. Um, when you see one get shot or killed, they'll come over and first try and pick it up or see if it's still alive, and then you'll witness a mourning ceremony that they do. When they walk through the thick winter snows, they walk in single file. And when the when the lead one gets tired, they step to the side and go to the very end, and where it's the easiest to work, and just how they cooperate. And then you think of how long they've been on this continent, how many ridiculous slaughters they've survived. They're a lot, their, their history parallels the history of the Native Americans and, you know, the reverence for the land, the respect, the, the understanding that they're, they're needed here to repopulate. And then you, you watch what they do. I mean, you see our domestic cows and they're flat hoofed. They stay in one area and they keep, eat all the grass until all that grass is gone because they're not from here. They don't know how to live in harmony with the earth. The buffalo you see come through the same area year after year and they don't stay in overgraze they pass through that area and when they come through they eat the grasses and spill the seeds their hoofs are shaped as such that they re 
till the soil and then you have the magic fertilizer out the back end and you have a perfect regeneration process and they come to these same areas because they know they've replanted it the year before and there will be more grasses and they'll take care of it and in that process they take care of us as well so if we could take the time to listen and learn from other animals I think we could start to solve some of humans problems so now how does this involve everyone in the United States well, the sad reality of all this is that this is all being done with your taxpayer dollars. We are all sending, you know, in these economic hard times where we're shutting down the government, our, our country's going to hell in a handbasket, we're still spending three to five million dollars annually of your taxpayer dollars to harass, kill, and slaughter the last of these buffalo for the sole interest of the Montana cattle industry. And I think it's an atrocity, I think it's a waste of money, and it's your money. So um, follow up, get involved, and understand what, what your tax dollars are doing in your name, and when you don't agree with them, do something about it. America's last free-roaming bison, subject to quarantine, slaughter, and a private ranch. Why Yellowstone bison do not belong on Ted Turner's ranch. The first quarantine experiment of orphaned Yellowstone bison calves is moving to Turner's ranch. After their parents were killed, these bison were forced to endure five years of prodding, testing, slaughter, and domestication. Stress and confinement are instigators of disease. Montana and the federal agencies promised the quarantine survivors would be restored to public and tribal lands for conservation purposes only. 88 Yellowstone bison were hauled to the private lands of Ted Turner, who is a prominent commercial bison rancher. He will get to keep 75% of the offspring of these bison and use them for his own commercial gains. We believe they have been stolen from all of us, from the American people and from the First Nations, who have wanted to bring their relatives, the bison, home for many years. More importantly, these bison have been taken from the lands that are their birthright. Montana's Department of Fish, Wildlife, and Parks and their media spin would have us all believe that the only options for these bison were going to Turner's Ranch or to slaughter. If you are opposed to them going to Turner, then you must be for slaughter. This is ironic, coming from an agency that has helped slaughter thousands of wild bison in recent years. Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks broke the agreement they gave us when they initiated the quarantine feasibility study to return these Yellowstone bison and their calves to public or tribal lands. Privatization and commercialization were expressly forbidden. And now we are being force-fed the ultimatum of slaughter or a good home at Ted Turner's bison ranch. The fact is, there are other options including millions of acres on public and tribal lands. This is just one more instance of the government and livestock industry manipulating wildlife and public perceptions. Transferring these wild bison to corporate interests, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks has broken trust with the public and tribes. We believe they have broken the law. Another reason that Yellowstone bison should not go to Turner's land, two years ago there was an anthrax outbreak on Turner's Flying D Ranch across from Turner's Green Ranch, where the Yellowstone bison will be held. 257 of Turner's ranched bison died in 2008. The outbreak was also responsible for the deaths of wildlife. At least 14 elk, two deer, and one black bear. The Montana State Vet recommended that cattle ranchers on lands adjacent to Turner's vaccinate their cattle against anthrax. Knowing this highly deadly bacteria is in the soil, this land should never have been an option for further quarantining Yellowstone bison.
Buffalo Field Campaign has opposed the quarantine feasibility study from the beginning, knowing strongly that this experiment would erode the wild integrity and unique behavior of America's last population of migrating bison. Quarantine is not the only way for American bison to be restored to the landscape. Bison can restore themselves via migration corridors to vast tracts of habitat enjoyed by all other wildlife. Bison advocates should refuse to accept the privatization and commercialization of Yellowstone bison and instead insist that disease management be focused on domestic cattle. Now, Mike, can you uh, talk to us a little bit about the birth control project that they're running uh, with the USDA? Well, here's um, another ridiculous waste of taxpayer money. Here we have the last of the kind of the species, and they're conducting a birth control experiment. It's called Gonicon over in um, Gardner, Montana, where they're trying to create basically a spade and neuter program or a, a way that these buffalo can't have babies and it's just like here we have the last of a species kind and we're worried about control i mean the one thing that we need to look at in this issue in particular is what is the controllable element we can't capture all our elk all our deer all our buffalo that have this quote unquote disease that really isn't even a life-threatening threat we control the cows the cows are rounded up numerous times vaccinated for numerous other diseases why aren't we spending all this money on coming up with a vaccine for the cows or we could also in the handful of cows that exist in this ecosystem put a buffalo proof fence around them i mean we have those all over the united states but no, it's just another control grab by the livestock industry and APHIS who are just trying to gain control of all of our wildlife. And, and we feel that the buffalo and all other wildlife have, have at least the same amount of rights, if not more, than the cattle industry. And, you know, their business is more like a welfare project anywhere. The, the state of Montana receives just as much in government subsidies as profit they make, so they're a break-even business at best. And why do the U.S. taxpayers have to fund their way of life and not the wildlife's way of life? Or even when people want to keep their land for the wildlife, they're told no. And this whole house and area out here loves buffalo. They, they moved here because they want to live with buffalo. And my philosophy is if you really don't want to live with buffalo, move anywhere else in the world. This isn't an epidemic problem. These are the only two towns, Gardner and West Yellowstone, that have buffalo, wild buffalo migrating. So um, if we can't learn to live with wildlife, the, there isn't anywhere else in the United States this exists. Why can't we control the one controllable element, the cows? And if not, then get the cows out of here. It's time that we brought back the buffalo. These are America's treasures. These are the last wild buffalo we have in the world. And yet somehow we want to manage for the most minimal number and we want to never let them come back to the lands that they inhabited since time immortal. If people want to get involved, uh, what are some things that they could do? Well, I mean, first and foremost, we're a volunteer organization, and if you go to our website, buffalofieldcampaign.org, um, there's a volunteer application form, and you fill it out and send it. All it costs you is to get here and to get home, and we feed, clothe, and house you. We're sponsored by Patagonia, who has incredible outdoor gear. We have snowshoes and skis if you come in the winter, and we'll take good care of you, and you'll get to go hang out with Buffalo every day. Um, if you don't have the time or energy to do that, I mean, our website is a plethora. Um, I think the biggest thing is that the state of Montana somehow is stealing all these taxpayer dollars to fund their one special interest. So I think if we let our senators and congressmen know that uh, from your state that we don't want our tax dollars going to fund Montana's beef industry, um, that's very important. And then there's petitions. We're looking to list these species as an endangered species. And, and there's many different ways. And, you know, 
the, the thing is, is just spreading the knowledge, as we like to say, spread the word to save the herd. People don't know this is going on. It's been a well-swept under the carpet issue. I mean, we've been on every major network, but like we were talking about earlier, CNN and them do a three-minute news piece, their objective, supposedly, and then they show the other side. And so in three minutes, you can't discuss what this is all about. So if you call us, we will send you newsletters that you can get out in your communities, um, share our webpage, spread the word any way you can, because um, this is an American atrocity. This is an insult. One of the few things we weren't lied to about in our history is we openly admit killing 30 to 60 million buffalo off this continent. And here's the last remnant trying to grow and re-fertilize and take care of our land, and we're killing them off for the same reasons we did 150 years ago. So that's my advice. All right, Mike, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for everything you're doing out here. Right on, and thank you guys, because um, as we all know, if we depend on mainstream media, it's all store-bought incorporated, and it's up to people like you to help spread the word about these important issues. So thank you for your work as well. well thank you. I appreciate it.